You can hear the wind just howling out here. It's early morning here. I'm trying to get motivated. Uh, like I said, I was up till four o'clock in the morning typing up all of our packing list and all of our grocery list, figuring our daily meal planners, getting everything ready for this trip. Anyway, this I stayed up to do, and it's just my RV packing list. So um, if anybody needs or wants a copy, just let me know. But I've got, this is my list, not John's, this is my list, but it's pretty basic. It's the clothing that I want to put in the RV, or if you're just out camping, some clothing you may need, the type of shoes uh, that we're going to be wearing. And this goes for my beach days and regular stays. Um, this just gives me an idea of the basics of, uh, of everything that I need, and then I can decide whether I need it for that particular trip or not. But I try to keep a set of clothes in the RV. I bring them in and wash them. And then I just exchange for another set of clothes for a different park, depending on the temperature. So shoes, like for example, sandals if we're on the beach or if I need flip-flops to go to the showers. We have onboard hot water, but sometimes I like to save, you know, fuel and you can get a free shower, a free hot shower. Uh, especially at the, at the wheelchair accessible area where we're at, we're always right by the showers and um, easy access on the roads to the showers there. Hiking boots, um, water shoes if you're on the beach or if you want to be sure and wear your shoes in the shower so you don't get like athlete's foot or whatever. Um, they do clean the showers every day, but just in case if you're worried about that kind of thing. Um, mud shoes, I wear my uh, clogs, my, my gardening clogs uh, whenever we take uh, Lexi out potty or if it's raining or anything like that. And like gloves, because it's supposed to get down to freezing weather um, this weekend. So, you know, it's nice to have a pair of something to keep your hands a little warm if you're out in a sweatshirt or whatever. My hands get so cold. They, I don't, I have poor circulation. Do you have poor circulation? And then like clothing, t-shirts, shorts, sandals. Um, I put things in here sometimes twice. That's fine. Tanks, blouses, jeans, belts, sweaters, warm and light jackets, socks, underwear, scarves, headbands, uh, ponytail ties, swimsuits, swimsuit wraps, and pajamas, you know, and then hiking bags, purse, backpacks, and beach bag, you know, depending, like I said, what I need. So I got the basic toiletries, hair care, eye care, uh, medicines. Um, I put medicines and I put monetary stuff of what we'll be taking in red because those are must-haves. we got to take those things. And as a matter of fact, I forgot to put on here my husband's breathing machine, but in reality, this is actually Janie's RV trip packing list. So I need to do John's and kind of adjust his from there. That's a weather report. We're getting severe flooding and high winds right now. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll put some pictures of that at the end of the video here. So you got your beach items, and if you're planning on taking a picnic or you need an umbrella or even a beach radio, all of those things are here. Electronics, your laptops, cameras, tripods, battery chargers, iPhones, all that's right here. Flashlights, any of that's right here under this list. Books and paper, I hope my homestead journal goes with me. Um, I find it's a great relaxing time to work on it, and uh, plus it has all of our schedule on it. And it has all of our itinerary and everything is in my homestead planner. Everything is in that homestead planner. It goes where I go. Uh, my Bible, of course, goes with me. Uh, business cards. I just got those printed up. I am so excited. And I, what, I don't have one with me right now? you got to be kidding me. My husband just walked away with them. <laughs> so I got my new business cards to hand out for our YouTube channel. And... Um, uh, pens, paper, music, CDs, movies, beach reads, and stamps. Never forget stamps because you got your, um, you know, you got card stuff. Um, monetary, like cash, your cards, checkbook. Um, when we broke down, I they made me write a check. They wouldn't take a card. They'd only take cash or check when we broke down. And uh, but they would take a card over the phone when we did the ho the um, the treehouse uh, thing. So some people took cash, some people would take cards, and I learned to bring my checkbook because some people would accept checks, and because I didn't want to give my card to, you know, some of the situations I didn't want to give my card out because um, one gentleman who had stopped way off in the corner had only stopped for a few seconds. I was giving out my car credit card to the. Um, to the lady who was helping to set us up in the treehouse for $350 a night. 
And I noticed he was putting numbers in his phone and tapping on texting in his phone while I was giving her the numbers on the phone. So I stopped giving her the numbers and I walked away and she said, I need more numbers, ma'am. And I said, someone's listening. And um, she goes, okay, take your time. So, um, so I walked down a, a hilly driveway and gave her the rest of my card numbers. And then the guy I noticed got in his car and went away. So um, there was nothing there for him to, to steal or rob. So I guess, I think he really thought he was going to listen to my credit card numbers. And then he left. So he was only there for a few seconds. But I don't even know that anybody even noticed him. I think even the police officer didn't really notice him. A laundry care. Uh, you know, hand wipes, detergents, clothespins, clothesline, and laundry bags. You cannot you let your wash water out on the lawn. You have to dump it in your motorhome uh, so it will go down the, um, the dump station site. So it's not, you can't throw your wash water out. And that just fills up your tank quicker, but that's why I got the smaller little wash machine because now I know that I won't fill up my gray water tank so quickly. All right, so itinerary items. Uh, maps, your routes, your weather, road conditions, apps. I got all the apps on my phone added, but it reminds me that I do have my apps or any new apps I might be looking at to download them. A reminder, uh, park arrival paperwork. So, um, the state parks in Indiana are just on it. I've not had anybody question that, but there's always a first, right? So um, be sure and bring your paperwork. Uh, trails and rules. And be sure and read those ahead of time because it's very important. Some state parks, depending where they're located, are just a little different sometimes on the rules. Um, there's some unwritten. There's basically 10 unwritten rules as well. And we'll go over those in the next video. Uh, first aid. These are some things I found when I cut my thumb really bad. Now, this is a week and a half, two weeks old now. But I cut it from there. And I sliced it on my hunting knife all the way around and cut through my nail. All of that has pretty much has healed up. It looks a little, I don't know, looks a little weird, but it was a big moon shape cut there. And I wanted the, it's a long story, but the guy that was setting up camp next to us had to run into the showers and get my husband, because you know, Dr. Dad. So, um, but we found that we were short a few first aid items uh, when that happened. So we needed more gauze. I bled a lot. <laughs> And, um, and we needed some different band-aids than the ones we thought we had stored in there. They were just, I mean, it took him three band-aids to cover it and, uh, and, and, and we didn't have any gauze. He needed gauze and I really needed, like he said, I probably needed two or three stitches in my thumb, but we didn't have stitches. So we decided some anti-itch cream and some Benadryl for the poison ivy because we both got poison ivy. <laughs> Going on the discovery trail, we discovered poison ivy and we both got it. And then um, Aura Gel, I had a toothache and while we were there and I didn't have any Aura Gel. Uh, bug spray I have got, but it's an all natural bug spray. And I find sometimes in the spring, and especially for Lexi, you wanna make sure that your pet is up to date on their, uh, tick, their tick medicine and stuff like that. Thumbs and nausea liquid and antibacterial cream. And then we have our bedding. I always find here clean sheets each trip. Okay, clean sheets each trip. And then your favorite blanket and your favorite pillows. It's always comforting to have that when you're out camp camping. Dog items. And then we have other. And under the other is things like trash bags, dish soap, you know, dish towels, a lighter for lighting campfires. Make sure that you know you've got one that has fluid in it. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's be realistic. Bring a lighter. Um, my pressure cooker, because all of my recipes are for the evening are for pressure cooking. And we're going to go over that in a minute. Fans, umbrella for both rain and for the beach. Oh, thank you. I got my other business cards. Oh, these right here you can see so much better than the square ones. Oh, I'm so excited. There's my new business cards. And then and then I've got my square ones. So that is so awesome. I don't know if you can see that or not. So those will be going with us. A cloak for when, especially when we're in this weather and taking out the dog and stuff, you really want to stay dry and be sure and bring your, uh, your rubbers, you know, your rubber boots and, um, rubber gloves for the dumping station, um, and carry lots of bleach. John and I are going to film this time the things that people do at the dumping station from the wheelchair accessible sites. We can see with people at the dumping station at Brown County, and I couldn't believe how many people put on rubber gloves. They dumped and then they started wiping their noses and their faces with their gloves. 
And I told John, I said, what good are the rubber gloves if you're going to touch your face with the, um, with the uh, crap <laughs> that's coming out of the hose? Um, why would you touch your face and other parts of your body? The whole idea is not to get it on you. And they were touching their face, their mouths. It was, I couldn't believe how many people were doing that. Some people were using their bare hands and no gloves. And then they were just washing their hands uh, in the in the same water hose that people were sticking down the hoses to rinse out the sewage hoses. And I thought, do they really think that's clean water coming out the tip of that? <laughs> so I was like, I got to do a show on that. That's, I mean, I've done some crazy things in my day. I am no, I am not perfect, but I think it needs to be done on proper etiquette at the, um, at the poop station. Okay. At the dumping station. So we're going to do that. Uh, booster cable charged uh, two days before leaving. So anything that needs charged before leaving, be sure and put that as well in the red. Everything that is a must goes in the red. And then we have booster cables. You don't have to ask anybody for a jump. We have one of those chargers. It fills up tires with air. And yes, we did use that. Weather forecast. Day one through day 10. I only did 10 days on here. I need to know the weather forecast because I need those I need those itinerary items which is road conditions and I will be writing that on here and then underneath here I'll be writing our route our basic route to get to where we're going because of all the flooding and because we have to cross the White River and the Wabash uh, rivers definite major flooding I mean we're flooding up here real bad and we know they've gotten more rain I'm gonna call the park ahead make sure that our site is still accessible with a class A motorhome any down trees or anything, any road construction, anything like that will have to do with itinerary, routes, and weather forecast. So all that will be on here and can we get there? And I do this ahead of time so I know that I can cancel that state park and head to a different state park or just cancel altogether uh, and, and make it for another time if you have to. If you can't get there, you can't get there. Um, but you don't want to lose, you know, $23 a day is parking. You don't really want to lose your hundred and some dollars. You don't want to lose that. Okay. You don't want to lose it. So this is a section of things that I missed or things that I needed that weren't on this list. And this right here is attachments. And I got attachments, my daily meal plan, my grocery list, uh, Janie's RV trip packing list, my trip itinerary before leaving to do list and the recipes. And be sure and take your recipes with you because when we go get our groceries and our meal plan, there's not a lot of room in that refrigerator for extras. So, I mean, I got to make sure. So I'm making meals that like if I'm going to buy mushrooms for a meal, then I'm going to make sure that I'm going to use it in one or two other meals as well. And, um, and this is before leaving uh, list and this is just my to-do list. So before leaving, I just have my list of things here and then I have yes or no and I circle yes or no whether or not I did it or had to do it down here. Pay bills, schedule mail pickup, schedule flower garden um, watering, uh, schedule uh, yard mode. We have all that done. We got that set up already. Uh, turn off all stove, curlers, whatever, anything that's hot that can burn the house down, turn it off um, because we're going to have cold nights and uh, not hot days for this trip. I'm going to turn down uh, the heat down to 65 degrees because we do have birds in the house and they like it. They're tropical, so they like it a little warm, but there's no reason to really heat heat the house if we're not here. So I turn it down to 65. Normally I keep it at about 68 um, or I turn up the AC if it's hot out, I'd turn up the AC to 78 degrees and the birds just love that. And of course that's not hot enough to, I mean the AC would kick on once in a while uh, depending on time of the year. We don't want to melt candles, okay? Just don't want to do that. All right. Or you can turn it off completely if you don't have uh, animals in the house. That's fine. Um, leave one light on in the kitchen. Reminds me to leave a light on and where I'm leaving it on at. Um, plus, if anybody's staying at the house, that they know to um, 
to leave the light on. And we have, of course, people staying here, don't we, Daddy? So that makes it a lot more convenient when they do the work for you. <laughs> but I still have this list just in case. Because shorter trips, I don't know, we might not have somebody here. Or maybe they, maybe somebody's not available. Uh, we have a great family about that, though. So um, bleach, I put bleach down the sinks, the toilets, the fountains outside the washing machine and the dishwasher so when we come back we don't have that stinky stinky smell and it really keeps things clean doesn't it, daddy yes. clean and fresh and we come in we always smell that lemon because i use lemon and you can use other lemon bleaches but nothing smells as good as the clorox bleach it leaves a great lemony fresh scent behind and the house whenever we come home it smells like it's been freshly cleaned by a maid service <laughs> and i like that so i throw a little bit of bleach down the um you know, even down the garbage disposal and stuff like that. So sinks, tubs, everything. It's just a dash of bleach. And then we leave and we uh, walk out the door. I do the bleach last because, you know, I get head migraines from the actual original smell of bleach. Uh, so we uh, clean water and we feed the birds. Or we take them where they need to go. But like I said, we have somebody staying here. So um, our birds will be well taken care of. So we got to get that list to them. So if there's any list you have to make to take care of pets or if you have to drop them off somewhere, you have vet appointments or anything like that for their tick or their tick medicine do that now add that here add that to your checklist um i have to make a bed i cannot come home from a trip to an unmade bed i'm sorry it's just me that made the that made the red that made the red uh to-do list <laughs> um laundry completed and put away and anything that need to be packed needs to be packed. I always do my laundry and get it done first. So that way I'm not running around trying to do laundry and trying to find something in the laundry that I know that I need. So I get the laundry done two or three days prior. I got the laundry done yesterday. And then I keep up with it. You know, the little loads, I keep up with it. And I even do a lot of hand washing during this time. And hang things up in my in my shower on the, like, the little rack in my shower. That way I know it's dry, I got my favorite jeans, I know what I'm packing, and I know that it's ready to take off the shelves. I got my list, remember? Remember, I got my list right over here. So um, this just keeps me organized, and then I'm ready to go. Because I got to pack and unpack a Class A motorhome, and it's like taking your house on wheels. And I don't want to buy two of everything. Uh, that gets expensive. And, uh, and we're doing a lot of traveling. If you don't travel a lot, then it's not worth buying two of everything. If you travel a lot, it might be worth it. Um, check my weather reports. Remember, I've got that written down. Um, check road reports and my route up to one hour, as little as one hour ahead. Because traffic accidents, police reports, things like that start coming in constantly. And I'm on an app site called Waze, W-A-Z-E. It is excellent, isn't it, John? When they said there's a car off the side of the road, there is a car usually always off the side of the road. If there's a police officer ahead, it will tell you. If there's a checkpoint, if there's a road closed, it, it I mean, it is on it, okay? It's on it. <laughs> and what it is, it's people report these things and they get points, Um for reporting them. So the big cities is just full of helpful people that want those points. And, uh, and it's like a game they play. So within their game, you get to take the advantage. And, uh, and then of course, I always comment on them and tell them thank you. And that whether or not the car is still sitting there or not when we go by, and then I put the time that we went by. So I'm not doing it for the points. I'm doing it to thank those who are in it for the points. And then they get more points. <laughs> so it works out for everybody. So it's a really great site. Um, it tells you your route. It tells you if there's an issue, another route to take. I really love it. And uh, I, I challenge all other RVers out there to give Waze, W-A-Z-E, Waze app on your iPhone or your other Droid phone. Give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. The next time you take a trip, I don't care if it's across town, try it and see what you think of it. We practice using the app. Uh, every time we went to the grocery store and to go get movies across town, we practiced the app ahead of time and it took us exactly where we wanted to go. And even when we knew there was a bridge being worked on, it told us about it and we learned how to work the app before we left on the major trip. Just a suggestion. Don't learn your apps the last minute. Learn them weeks in advance, okay? If you can, at least days in advance if you can. And you can pre-plan your trip on ways. You can pre-plan your trip 
and uh, and it will give you an alarm and tell you what time you need to leave to get there at the time you want to arrive, even at a doctor appointment. I used it for John's doctor appointments and it worked. It told him when what time to get up. <laughs> he basically was in the car. It said you should be in your car and leaving now. And he raced out the door because he was running late. He raced out the door and he got there exactly um, 45 minutes early the way he had planned it because he wasn't quite sure how to get to the VA doctor appointment. It was, you know, they just, the VA just calls you and tells you, you have to be somewhere and they put paperwork on your door, literally deliver it on your door, not even to your mailbox. It's on your door. When we got back from our trip, they called us and said, you got to be back from your trip because he's got a VA appointment and you got to be there or else they'll take away your disability funding. So he had all of his doctor appointments and they scheduled them uh, two days apart, you know, back to back. And we were able to come home and get them all and then get back on the road again. So this is part of having disabilities. Um, and we uh, camp with both of our disabilities. We, we, we do our camping. So that's where I said the medicines and anything like that for me. But John has other issues. So his 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 thing here would be a little different than mine. So we've checked road reports. We've routed our thing up to as little as one hour ahead of time to check for any closings or any accidents or anything that might make us have to change our route. Remember, when you're in a Class A motorhome and you're pulling a large rig of any type and maybe a car behind, you've got to know whether or not you can get down under the bridges and things. You've got to know where these routes are taking you because Waze might take us on another route to get around something but does that route accom accommodate semis or large traffic? So we put in there that we are a large, uh, a large vehicle, class A vehicle, and then it, it, it adjusts our routes and it gives us four or two to three other routes and up to four if you click the button and tell them none of the routes work for you. It'll take you a, even another route. So lots of options for routes uh, if one is has a problem. Um, keys. Don't leave your house without keys, please. <laughs> please don't leave without the keys. Uh, you don't want to lock yourself out and you want to make sure that everybody's taking, maintaining your home while they're gone. You want to make sure to leave them keys as well. Whether it be neighbors, friends, family, what have you. Um, I have an extra set of keys. Uh, each of my children all have keys to the house. So, uh, lock all windows and doors and set all alarms and anything and then I got an other section so that's just the before we leave to-do list yours might be a little different than mine but that is an attachment and then I go over that as well um, I do have my pressure cooking guide specifications remember I told you that my power cooker that I got at Goodwill for nine dollars and ninety nine cents did not have instructions so I found the manual online and now I, I don't have to guess anymore I got lucky and guessed at the last trip but now I don't have to do that because this has all the pressure times for my cooker and canner. Uh, all the park maps with our site. And then here is the one that I made up for the RV trip state park grocery list. And everything that we need for our grocery list, including ice drinks, anything for the beach, picnic, anything like that. And this is our RV trip. And this says four day meal plan. And then this says for Turkey Run State Park. So I've got the park. I've got the dates we're going to be there and the check-in times. And then because our check-in's not till 2 p.m., we won't be eating breakfast the first day. So I just have lunch and dinner here. I don't want to bring food, like I said, in the cooler and the refrigerator that we're not going to be eating. And then Wednesday, we'll be there breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Thursday, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then Friday, when we leave, we'll be there for breakfast and lunch, but checkouts at 2 p.m. We're probably, we're planning on leaving around noonish, 1 o'clock. We want to give ourselves plenty of time to dump and get out of there and then any snacks and any dog meals and uh, that she'll be having as well so anyway in this right here this map here is for the Indiana Dunes because we're heading there next we got a place right here here is the beach and we're just right uh, where's our little spot we're parked right here and right there's just a walk to the beach so I'm pretty excited about that and we're gonna see a lot of the um, nature trails and things like that the boardwalk here, I guess, is closed. I don't know if they've got it reopened yet or not. And with all this flooding, I doubt if it's open. So I'm hoping that trip is a week and a half to two weeks away. So uh, another state park, another thrill. 
So be sure and visit your state parks. Be sure and use a camping list. It makes life so much easier. Make your own if you can't find a template online. Google them. Camping packing list because there's tons of them online and I did look at a lot of them just to help give me some reminders of some of the things that I may need. But I ended up again making my own. So anyway, I hope that's helped you. I'll give you some ideas on planning your summer trips and vacations to your local state parks. And if you're in Indiana, come by and say hi to us, okay? We love you. Go with God. Be sure and hit that subscribe button because we've got a lot coming up and we're going to be doing a lot of camp cooking, all right? Joy coming up the last 15 minutes coming into Turkey Run. You start getting more of a treed, woodsy look around the roads. And I told you, I'm going to take you for the drive with us, so. Absolutely. Look at the canopy over the top of the road. It's just so beautiful. Alright. I'm not quite sure where we're at. We made that turn. Alright, we're going to turn right. Go. Then turn right again. Okay, right here's us. We're, we're right here. We're pulling. This is us right here. I knew it when I saw it. We're a drive through. Doesn't that kind of make it a little bit easier? Yeah. steps and most of the day has just been packing and unpacking and stuff so all right dinner um i'm gonna wash my hands and then for dinner we're gonna have beef and noodles i mean fire and camping goes hand in hand but but when you suffer from migraines it's a um okay we're just going to make this simple tonight because we're still setting up camp. I'm really tired. All that big lot shopping made me tired. And let's see. By the way, I want you to see this beautiful bouquet that I made out of my garden. See that? These are gluten-free noodles, so it doesn't take them very long. Maybe six minutes at the most to be done. We love you. Be sure and subscribe. Tomorrow's going to be another big day. Thank you so much for this day. Bless us and keep us. Help us as we serve you. Bless our family, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.